Hey, Guy from New Plastic, and today we'll create the best looking skin material with Redshift. Check out last week's video if you want to see how to do it with Octane's standard surface material. I'll be using a model from texturing.xyz, but this should work the same way with any model with high quality PBR textures. Emphasis on high quality. This is really the only way to get realistic results. Whether 3D scanned or hand painted, if the textures themselves are not extremely high quality, the material is just not going to look convincing. If you're looking for ways to improve your 3D workflow, check out the new plastic gum road. You can find all sorts of procedural material packs and hairs and models and characters. You'll help yourself and you'll greatly support the channel. Another way to support the channel is buying prints and pins I made on the Pink Eye Gum Road, so check it out as well. And of course, consider supporting on Patreon or membership where you can watch these videos with no ads, get access to these project files, get free products from the store, and other cool perks, but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all. Follow me on Instagram at Ojang or the channel at Brand New Plastic. Join our Discord, subscribe, play more chess. Let's go. So I have the model here. I already textured the eyes and the hair. I got a backdrop here with an area light on it, another area light lighting the head from the back, and a small key light from the front at about 45 degree angle. So you can see how it looks without the key light, without the background light, and without the rim light. And I also have a weak HDRI for some ambient light. And of course I have the model here at real world scale, which is very, very important. And you can see it's real world scale if I add a figure object, which you can see roughly matches the head scale. Okay, let's add a standard surface material and add the textures. So I have the albedo, cavity, normals, specular, and displacement map. And I'll just drag them all into the material, organize them a bit, and make sure you change the color space of any map that's not a color map to raw. It's especially important for the normal maps, even though if your normal map doesn't look good when it's set to raw, then set it to auto. So the albedo map is the only map I'll leave at auto here. I'll apply the material to the model. And one thing I forgot to mention is that I have a redshift tag on the object with tessellation and displacement turned on, which subdivides the model and will be especially crucial once we add displacement later on in the video. Okay, let's start with the albedo. I'll add a color layer node, plug the albedo map to layer zero and the cavity map to layer one mask. Let's solo this and turn off layer one for now. I'll add a color correction node to the albedo map. And I just like to up the contrast just a bit, not too much so to not distort the colors, but just enough to bring out some of the detail in the texture map a bit more. And that made the image a bit darker, so I'll compensate for it by upping the gamma just a bit. Okay, now I'll add a ramp node to the cavity map. I'll invert the notches to invert the image. So now the pores are all white. And actually, let me turn off the denoising because I see it's glitching out the details. Okay, that's better. So now I'll crush the blacks a little bit on the ramp node. And if I solo the color layer, you can see we're overlaying all those pores over the albedo map. And to soften it up a bit, I'll change the blend mode to soft light. And now the brighter this layer's color is, the less strong the effect will be. If I pass to 50% gray, it'll start to have a brightening effect and 50% gray will be invisible. So I want something like 70% black. And that's just a very subtle effect. Always try to be as subtle as you can with all this detail work. Okay, let's plug the color layer to the base color channel and the SSS color channel. And we have an old Kazakh woman made out of plastic. So let's plug the specular map into the reflection weight channel and also to the reflection roughness channel using a ramp node. Invert the notches on the ramp node to invert the image. And we can maybe play with the roughness gradient to further dial in the look. So maybe I'll pull the black notch in, but make it brighter so the surface won't be too shiny. And the specular map itself looks fine. Let's bring the IOR down to 1.45, but honestly, it doesn't make that much of a difference. And okay, we're getting somewhere. Let's turn the subsurface scattering all the way on. And you can see we're getting the effect mainly on the edges of the model, but it's a bit too strong and too white now. So first let's change the radius color to some kind of a strong red color. So now we're getting only the red color scattering inside the model, but the light is still penetrating too deep into the model. So let's bring down the scale to 0.12. And since our project's units is set to centimeters, this should mean the light will penetrate 0.12 centimeters in, so 12 millimeters in. And that's why it's so important to keep your model at real world scale. And you can see we're getting this red softness on the nose, which looks really good. The rest of the skin is just soft enough and not too gummy and red. But we do get a little bit too much SSS on the eyelids, which is a very common problem. Let's zoom in on the ear. It looks okay. On the ear, I think the SSS is a bit too weak actually, but it's not bad. What if we make the rim light stronger? Yeah, the ears are reacting okay. There's still a little bit of dialing in we can do here, but first let's add our normal map. 
I'll just quickly make the key light a bit bigger and stronger because the image feels a bit dark right now. Okay, cool. I'll plug our normal map into the bump channel using a bump node. Set the input map type to tangent. And if we go into a super close up, you can see we're getting all this fine detail that's really, really nice. But yeah, that red glow in the eyelids is almost worse now. So let's create a scattering map. I'll open the albedo map in Photoshop and just paint the eyelids area black. Not full black, just some kind of a dark gray because we definitely still want to have some scattering in the eyelids, just not 100%. And also paint the ears fully white, which will tell Redshift to use 100% scattering on the ears. And then all the rest, I'll paint some very, very light gray. So the rest of the face will have about 85% scattering effect. From all my testing, I noticed Redshift really emphasizes the scattering color, even on thicker surfaces. So you need to lower the scale, but that kind of makes the thin parts lose the scattering so by creating this scattering map we can really control the scattering effect across the whole model more precisely okay i'll save this as a separate file drag it into the material and plug it into the sss weight channel and you can see we got rid of that weird red glow in the eyelids maybe a bit too much it looks kind of dead now so let's solo this and i think if we change the color space to raw yeah, now it's the right grayscale values and we're getting some of the scattering back just slightly. I actually went back to the scattering map and made the eyelid area a bit brighter to bring out the SSS a tiny bit more. I have an SSS AOV turned on so I can go here and choose to view the SSS channel only. And you can see it's not completely black here. So we're getting a little bit of an effect, which is good. And of course, you can go back to Photoshop and make the blacks brighter or darker according to your needs. The ear looks good. Chin and lips look good. Just a subtle softness that doesn't feel too gummy. We're good. Okay, next is a really important step and that's adding a secondary specular layer. You can look at it as kind of a subtle oily layer on the skin and this will make the highlights on the skin more rich and complex. To do that, I'll plug the specular map into the coating layer weight channel using a ramp node. I'll add a tiny bit of roughness to the coating layer, something like 0.1. And let's focus on this area here. Feel free to play with the IOR, anywhere around 1.5 should be good either way. And to add more texture to the gloss, we'll plug our normal map into the coating layer bump channel. And now I can control the strength of the gloss by changing the bright values on the ramp node. And yeah, that really adds a subtle but crucial lively feel to the skin. If we zoom in here, you can see this subtle gloss. Let's save this image to the picture viewer. And if you want to control the amount of texture this gloss has, you can connect a normal map into a separate bump node and use that in the coding bump channel. And now you can increase or decrease the coding bump only without affecting the base normal map. So you can see by increasing the coding normal strength, we're adding more texture and diffusing this gloss layer a bit more. You can also do that by upping the coding roughness, but I like to keep the coding roughness pretty low and sharp and just use the normal strength to diffuse it. Okay, next move that can add some nice subtle detail, but is not really crucial, is adding sheen. If I turn sheen all the way up, you can see we're getting some of that velvety fuzz. If we zoom out, you can see how it affects the skin. And by default, you will actually have roughness to 0.3, which will be way too strong. So I like to keep the sheen roughness at 0.1 and it's still too strong and uniform. So I'll add a max on noise with a ramp node to the sheen weight channel. And now I can scale the noise up, change type to FBM and add more detail to it, play with the contrast, and more importantly, change the ramp notches to dark gray and light gray. So we're just breaking up the sheen layer. And if we compare this to with no sheen at all, we're getting this subtle effect that's supposed to kind of mimic that peach fuzz we have on our face that catches the light at an angle in a very subtle way. I like how it looks, especially on the nose and the cheeks but it shouldn't affect the lips since we don't have peach fuzz on the lips and same thing for the eye area. So to fix that, I'll again open the albedo map in Photoshop and just paint the eye area and the lips black on a white background. Save this as a separate file and drag it into the material, make some space here. I'll change its color space to raw, multiply it over the noise layer and plug the multiply node into the sheen way channel. And if I solo this, you can see how the sheen weight is distributed, basically removing it from the eyes and the lips and breaking it up across the rest of the model. 
And I also like to change the sheen color to some very bright cream color so it's not fully white. Nice, subtle, but nice. Okay, lastly here, I wanna use the displacement map. We're looking great without a displacement map, but this will help us get really good details, especially when we're really zoomed in, which is where even a really high quality normal map can start to fail. So I'll use a displacement node to plug the displacement map into the displacement channel. And from this distance, the first thing you'll notice is how much more pronounced the large and middle details get. And if we zoom in, you can really see how even the micro details are much more pronounced. And that also obviously depends on your displacement map. In my case, the displacement map has micro details in it as well, which means I don't really need the normal map as much. If I compare this to without any normal maps, you can see how having displacement and normal bump both at 100% is just too much detail and it looks kind of weird. We can definitely get rid of the coding layer normals now because the coding layer texture will be driven by the displacement channel. But if you want, you can keep the base normal channel, but we can definitely reduce the strength, so maybe 0.5. And if we compare this to without normals at all, now it doesn't look that bad. Just add some subtle texture. And if we compare this to with full normal strength, yeah, that full normal strength is way too much and we're really losing the coding gloss as well, so yeah. I think I want to turn the normal strength even more down to 0.25 and yeah, this looks really good. And I'll now just test out different parts of the face with different lighting just to make sure I'm getting consistent results and that the skin keeps a realistic look under different conditions. And that's really important because the skin reacts differently to different light sources. So test out different light directions, test it out with sunlight as well since it tends to be less flattering and will really reveal issues with your material different light temperatures. One thing I like to do is to test it out with a light source coming directly from the camera. So it really kind of flattens the image and it's something you usually want to avoid. But if it looks good that way and it looks realistic that way, then you know you're nailing it. If we zoom in here on the pores, I like the subtle red softness the pores have. I can actually maybe reduce the displacement strength to like 0.8, but that really depends on your displacement map. And that's exactly why testing different light sources and angles is so crucial. Yeah, this is fucking awesome. Nice subtle red glow in the nostrils. Skin looks soft, but not gummy. Yeah, looks amazing. Okay, that's it. Hope that helped you figure out how to better dial in your skin material in Redshift. There's no single formula here. It's just about really controlling the details in a very subtle way. So the more you do it, the more you'll get a hang of it. There's no other way around it, really. Check out the new Plastic Gumroad store for cool 3D stuff, the Pink Eye Gumroad for cool real life stuff, and consider supporting on Patreon or membership because you know I wouldn't have been able to make these videos without the help of all these impeccable patrons and members you see on the screen right now. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.